Good to see you. Where do we want to be on Friday night? Right here with my Chatterbox buddies. I was I turned on the Chatterbox at 5:41 and went, "Hey, there's only 12 people here." <laughs> of course, it was almost an hour before the show started. <laughs> I love that about you guys. Get in your brown chair, your red chair, get your stretch your pants on, snacks, drinks, friends. You got it all figured out, how to spend a Friday night. I am Mary Gunn of Mary Gunn Fun, your intrepid host of Craft Roulette. Mr. Producer's over there where he's supposed to be. Laura Fedora is in her place. We will meet her in just a minute. The Chatterbox, you are, you are on fire. I just adore you. Thank you so much for being here. This is Craft Roulette. What is Craft Roulette? It's the ultimate paper crafting card making game show challenge. And we are here almost every Friday night at 6.30, 6.10s for the slideshow, Central Daylight Time, leaving a place right here, right here for you. You just snuggle right up here. Let's have a show. So, uh, 100, 300 plus cards, 300 plus cards. Can I uh, give, can we give a little round of applause for yourself? You guys sent in beautiful, wonderful cards. I loved seeing the basics stamp set by Craft Roulette. It was fantastic to see how many ways you were already using it. Well, well done. Early brain kisses. I think early brain kisses. Um, if you are here coming back after meeting Christopher Allen last week, we welcome you. Thank you so much for joining us. I hope to see you in the chat and definitely in the gallery next week. Again, we'd love to have you. Um, for the friends of Crafty Al who is who are partaking in her giveaway for a Crafty Let the Basic Stamp Set, welcome. She had a little giveaway over on her channel. And if you had never been on Craft Roulette, I saw a whole bunch of you over there that had never been on Craft Roulette. So we welcome you as well. If you wouldn't mind going ahead and giving that thumbs up, get that out of the way. If you don't, yet yeah, you heard your name, Crafty Al. Your your meal is ready. Come get your dinner. Um, no, that's not it. That's a that's another story. <laughs> anyway, um, so if you would go ahead and do the share, share, thumbs up, subscribe, all that kind of stuff, we'd appreciate it. It would mean a world to us. We do have some spin sponsors, so if you saw a card, if you sent in a card last week, your name is eligible for a gift this week. And we have a spin sponsor of Brutus Monroe. We learned all about that little lovely company. May May Made It is also sponsoring this month with a gift certificate. And... Pear Blossom Press, <laughs> which we get to meet May May and we get to meet Amanda again from Pear Blossom Press later this month. So stay tuned every Friday, but definitely stay tuned if you sent in a card last week because we will be giving away those gift certificates and more at the end of the show. And you got to claim your prize. I, I don't know where you are otherwise. We at Craft Roulette are not sponsored by any businesses. We get pledges and financial support by our wonderful patrons and boys and girls ladies and gentlemen crafters and craftettes patrons and patronettes <laughs> we have an all patron call tomorrow and it's at noon central time you are not going to want to miss it you guys it's going to be so much fun i have a game to play and we're going to have uh get to meet some of our new patrons as well and we get to welcome this week to as patrons Teresa parmenter Rebecca Feltner and Ginger Larkin. You guys, thank you so much for coming on as supporting on our support team. It really, it really helps us a lot. And uh, not only financially, but it just means the world to us that you would think, hey, these shows, those shows are kind of fun. I'm going to get throw in my hat and give them a little support. It means the world. Thank you so much. Mr. Mike, um, Lee Kendall told me, that little girl from Alberta, told me that he, she liked his little purple outfit so much. I just left it on this week. So, and this is by the House of Detizio. Right, Arlene? That is exactly right. We also have our little stamp set, and it's down in the description where you can get it. It is filled with all sorts of iconic craft roulette items, and that's it's a whole nother world. It even has a fun little a little drawing of all those craft roulette things. And we also have merchandise over on 
Yes. And I have made a couple requests lately. So maybe we'll get something new here pretty soon. I have several shirts, including one that was on the slideshow. Did We all loved it. It had the little craft roulette wheel all over it. And then it had like black sleeves. It was so cute. I want it. I want it badly. So we'll see what we can come up with. So that's enough of that. Well, let's get on with this show, shall we? From Illinois, please give a warm craft roulette welcome to Laura Fedora, sometimes known as Laura Basson. Yay! Yes, that's right. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> You're here. I'm and this... here and I have my craft roulette necklace. I'm so impressed. I love yeah. that. And I said, there's a Brighton craft roulette necklace. But that's way out of my league. <laughs> yeah, so. me too, probably. This is not very expensive. Well, I think it's adorable, and I need to find out where, how to get those. Those are, That's adorable. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, you for being here tonight. How are you? I'm doing good. I was excited to do a show with another hockey mom. That's right. Bring the cowbells. Let's do it. <laughs> pound on that glass. You know, if we don't get something good from the wheel, we'll be pounding on that glass. Pound on the monitor. <laughs> do you do that? I I love pounding on glass, personally. Oh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty quiet. Are you? I don't want to stick my finger in a fan that I, I'm, I like to stay out of trouble. Okay. All right. There were only, there were a few times I pounded. <laughs> but only a few but one of my well we're gonna learn we'll talk more about hockey because we do love hockey and uh but we want to know more about you can you tell us a little bit because this is your first time to craft roulette yes okay uh i'm a wife i'm a mother of five we live in central illinois and we have a dog a retriever hank the tank and everyone's home right now, so all seven of us are here for the summer, and it's a circus. I mean, just the day-to-day -day keeping everyone alive and clean type of thing is a lot. But, uh, okay, so I started card making. Well, I think I've been making cards my whole life, but I went to a Stampin' Up! party years ago, and then I was hooked and started buying all the Stampin' Up! stuff. And then I found out that there was this whole card making world online and i started kind of like getting to know people there's a whole community of people and companies and kind of dove in and somewhere along the line it became a job i, I feel really really blessed i love 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 being able to stay home and make cards every day for different companies and i love it yeah yeah it's a pretty you have a very special gift and it's nice that we get to enjoy it on this community that you're talking about because you do have a lot of beautiful cards that you have you, i've never seen a glue smudge on any of your cards or anything it's just like wow she's really good <laughs> so. oh well i mean there's this thing called photo editing <laughs> well shh. i want to live in my dreamland to think that you are just perfect <laughs> A hockey mom to a hockey mom. So, yeah. yep, Stampin' Up! did a lot for getting the word out on craft on card making. And for yes. that, I think it's just fabulous. The, we have changed quite a bit in the industry how since Stampin' Up! But they're still going strong. We yes. have a couple consultants or demonstrators that come on the show. And uh, they just work their tails off. But it's great. Oh, yeah. 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 I still love their designs. I mean... I studied graphic design in college, so I got a bachelor's in that, and I just love design oh, yeah. as a whole. So I remember pouring over the Stampin' Up! catalog. I just think they have a great design aesthetic, and I think they do great work. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's fun. And there's so many styles in card making, as you saw oh, in yeah. the slideshow. There's there's so many. You can do anything and make it into a card. Yes. When um, Eileen Hull was on last a couple of weeks ago, I, she was going, I don't really make cards. And I said, well, it's like a book, except with no thickness. <laughs> you just fold it and it's a card and you can do that. You can just make a book cover. And so that is just, uh, you just fold it <laughs> and then that's it. <laughs> it's not hard. Yeah. So, yeah. All right. Well, we're going to learn more about you. We've got some questions from our patrons, including if she what color she prefers, and uh, get our project started here in a little bit. But you had a question for me. I did. I was wondering, what is craft roulette? 
<laughs> That's the hard part. You just did it. Let's do this. We'll find out. We'll be right back with some more information and fun. Thank you. What is Craft Roulette? Craft Roulette is a live paper crafts challenge show where the goal is to complete a project that has been randomly selected by the spin of a wheel. There are four categories we spin for, project, colors, element, and random. Each category has 24 possible options with a combined possibility of 331,776 unique projects. Whoa. We're live every Friday at 6.30 p.m. Central on YouTube.com slash Craft Roulette. Please like and subscribe. Each week we bring on a special guest crafter to create along with us and share their unique take on the challenge. You can play too. Complete a unique project of your own using the same four parameters set in this episode. You'll have 48 hours to contribute by submitting pictures of your project through the submission form on craftroulette.live. Contributions are featured on marygunfun.com's weekly episode blog and the next episode. Let's recap last week's episode and submissions. Yep, that's what we do every Friday night, like the like the man said, right there on that there on that there video. Yep, we're here every almost every Friday night, and you really are encouraged and welcome to join us. We love it having you here. So we're gonna do something right now. It's we call it the uh, parade of achievements when I remember, and we're gonna talk about uh, some milestones that people have hit, some welcome some first timers, and welcome a couple three people to Club Fifty Two, which has which means nothing. <laughs> it's just something we do. We got 310 contributions last week, so we are up to 16,649 total contributions. Yes, that is, lay them all out, it's more than a mile. And it's also about over five stories high, if you line them up. There was my wacko card. Oh, my stars. Okay, so sometimes I don't do real normal cards, and this was one of them, but I personally just really liked it. It was just a heck of a lot of fun. The parameters were small bag, and I made a ma bag mobile. Of course, everybody did. Uh, I had to do rainbow colors, so I had some rainbow colors in there. And wheel, I put purses on the wheel, so there's some more bags. And then shimmer headlights shiny stuff that I splattered on there. Anyway, it was kind of crazy card, but I like it. We had a fun guest, Christopher Allen from Brood Brutus Monroe. Look how different his card is. His card makes sense. And it was really cool. It was their first, um, right after they had released their Oz uh, cards are their Oz bundles and line, and so he got to use it. And you can twist this wheel and the other, the Glenda Witch, I believe it is, comes up and out from the horizon. He did a beautiful job. It was a lot of fun with spending the evening with him. If you do, you can always go back and watch all of the reruns. We have 166 of them. So uh, you can binge and binge. And you can turn off Netflix for the whole summer and binge Craft Roulette. Seriously, we'll save you 20 bucks a month. <laughs> anyway, that was great fun. Thank you so much, Christopher, if you're watching tonight. Shall we bring Laura in for the achievements? I, I'd love that. Come on in, Laura. Okay. There she is. All right. Now, this is on a um, timer, and so we can't talk forever, but we can enjoy it. How's that? Okay. Okay. Welcome first timers, Karen Rogers from New Zealand. See how wow, she did is this the whole a bag? Yeah. Oh. She went real literal. Wow. Ooh. Es Esther from Washington, first time contributor. Love Do a you... rainbow. Mm-hmm. Rainbow and roller. I mean them. you can't can't beat it. Denise from Tennessee. Welcome. We're so glad to have you. Pinwheels. Yes. Very clever. Lisa G, first timer from New Jersey. She's got her did little she make elements. That bag? I would have bet she did. Wow. 
Melissa from Texas is a first timer. Look at that big wheel in the background. That is cool. <laughs> it looks pretty pop art. Gwen Simmons oh. from California has hit a major milestone of her golden major milestone with 50 cards. Well done, Gwen. Wow. Congratulations. That's a lot of extras, too. Sue Harris from London, it's going to be on the call tomorrow, too, by the way, has hit, also hit 50. She's real fun. She has a lot of history in, about London for us. Major milestone achiever Christina Brome from Sweden has sent in 125 cards week after week after week. Wow. Jackie Muller is our leading lady with 127 cards. I love, Shoot. love, love that background. Sewing a bag. Her twin Smurf Murphy is in California with also with 127. It was a flying car and they were, she's getting more like me every day. Kathy <laughs> Herring from Wisconsin has sent in 131. Really cute. She's got a nice clean style. You'd like it. Yes. 5K now, 6K Lamone from Florida has sent in 133. She is our third le lady, leading lady. Real cute. That is cute. El Ellen Card Monkey Jarvis is our second leading lady with 144. She's never missed a week since she started. Are those, is that using your stamp set? I think so. Wow, and Patty cool. Beck has sent in 161. She hasn't missed a week since episode five. Whoa. Wow. Welcome to Club 52, Sire! Yahoo! And he drew his, I'm pretty darn sure. Except he used our stamp. Oh, Sue wow. Kramer also has sent in 52. She is now a club member. Oh, posh. How posh. Yeah. Vanessa B is also a Club 52 member. Sorry, guys, you get no perks, you get no discounts, you get no special lounges. It just means that we are thankful that you have sent in a year's worth of cards. Thank you all for sending in those 310 cards. It is just a special gift to have you spend some time making something that you enjoy and then sharing it with us. We really, really appreciate it. Pretty cool, huh? Very cool. Yeah, yeah. And you know, Miss Laura, the thing is, I didn't know any of those people before this show. And now it's just like, I can call them on the phone and we can talk. And it's just, really? yeah, and it's just neat. Because cool. we've gotten to be friends over the, over cards. <laughs> so it's just, it is cool. It is. Yeah. It's better than going to bars. True. Yeah. <laughs> you, it's hard, unless you're going to a card bar. Uh, oh, we should start one of those. A franchise, you want to? <laughs> as long as they serve fries, I'm there. Hey, yeah, pizza and fries, fedoras. Yeah, we can do yeah. it. We can do it. <laughs> anyway, well, that was very much last week. And about this time last week, we were going... I don't know what I'm going to do with those four new parameters. I have no idea what I'm going to do with small bag rainbow no. wheel. What? We didn't have them yet. Well, almost. Okay. Almost. almost. <laughs> He's being chronos on me. Um, but we didn't know about this time last week what we were going to do with those four parameters that we had just gotten. And we're about to do it again. Are you ready? Am I ready? Yeah. I was born not ready. <laughs> <laughs> That's re remarkably refreshing and honest. <laughs> I understand that concept a lot. So we are going to spin for Project Colors, Element, and Random. But before we get started, we like to ask our patrons if they would like to veto a couple of those parameters. And this week they said, <laughs> I don't know why, but they said no color palette called cereal box <laughs> and they said i'm not feeling the fashion element there and i'm sorry i don't know the number there it is and for random they said no zig and no zag yep there you go that means that if we land on those elements we will spin again or those parameters we will spin again and the wheel cannot make us use those you can use those if you want to. 
spots. For instance, if we get fresh and clean for the colors and you say, I really am feeling the Cheerio box calling me for some color palette, you go ahead and do those kit Cheerio box. Just keep it nice and clean. Don't do grungy Cheerio boxes. Yeah, yeah, that's the kind of thing. We also like to ask our guest, is there something that would ruin your night on that board? Something that you would say, no, thank you. Oh, oh, um, <laughs> well, some of these things like a Z fold card, I don't even know what that means. It's that really, I will tell you a hint on that. That one's really simple. And we oh, will go over all of these. So until we will stay on the one frame until you are comfortable. Because this is okay. not the show where we throw you under the bus. This is the show where we want to make something and just ch chat and have a good time. Okay. Okay, so is what what looks a little bit off? Um, I mean, I'm game. I mean, I'm, okay. I'm up for it. I, I can try we can do it. That. You know, and I can't guarantee, but I'll, I, you know, I'll try it. I, okay, I don't we think can do that. Anything that's going to like ruin my night. You know what I mean? That's the ticket. Let's go with it. Yeah. How about which four parameters would you like the wheel to give you? Okay, so I looked it over. And okay, so for projects, this is going to be really cliche. Uh, the guest <laughs> choice, number 13. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Okay, and then oh, for colors, I did number five, happy colors. I mean, that's yeah. easy. That's what yeah. I do. Okay, and then it elements. Is. Another cliche, number 11, good. As long as you make it good, <laughs> we're good. We're all good. And then, okay, so for random, I put geometric shapes, number 10. Uh -huh. I that's thought you... just, yeah. Yeah, I thought that might I... uh, ring true with you. I kind of, yeah. when I looked it through and I went, I think she'd probably, I thought maybe clean and fresh and clean, because that's I on brand that for one. you. Yes. But geometric shapes, I thought you'd be really, really comfortable with. Um, yeah, and a basic A fold, A2, right? Right, yes. Yeah, so. All right, well, let's see what we get, shall we? Okay, okay. Here we go. Let's give this guy a warm up. I hope you get something you like. Last week, Christopher got Shimmer, and that was on his, that was on his wish list. So, for project. Number 18, a thank you card. Ah, oh, we got that one. Colors, will we get happy colors? We aren't gonna get cereal box. Number eight, farmer's market. Okay, all right. Okay. Okay. Think of things that you would see, those kind of colors. And for element, will we get something good? Good dog, good morning, good grief. Nope. Rhymes with B. Doesn't mean it has to be B, just rhymes with B. We'll talk about this. And okay. for random, come on, give her some geometric shapes at least. I have a plan for rhymes with B with geometric shapes. Oh, our everybody's favorite, punctuation. <laughs> <laughs> All okay, right. I'm gonna need some explanation on some of these. We're going to we're going to tear them apart from top to bottom. Okay. <laughs> Thank you card. That one's easy. You can do any yes. kind of shape, you could do any kind of fold, you can do any size that you like. You can make it the size of a billboard if you want, but probably would be hard to make. Especially by Sunday night when everybody has to have their cards in. So thank you card is let's, good. Let's back up and explain oh, yes. the entire thing for everybody. Here at Craft Roulette, we don't teach. <laughs> We're not going to teach you a darn thing, but you might pick up a few tips. But what we do is we just give you four parameters. We talk about them. We would love to see what your interpretation of those parameters are with your own art project. We don't tell you what to do. We don't tell you what you need to include or not include, except for they have to include those four parameters in some way. If there's something that looks a little that's kind of hard to see, feel, or understand, just put it in the description so that we can, um, we can enjoy your, your uh, creativity with you. All right? Yeah, that's all. I mean, that just opens it all way up. So your thank you card can, however you want to make a thank you card. 
colors for farmers market we have a lot of farmers markets around here and when i think of them i think of bins of fruits and vegetables so that doesn't mean you have to have all of the colors of every fruit and vegetable but you can have um, you can bring it down into those color that color palette to kind of give you a little nuance a little bit of feel for what the colors may feel like by the way you just did a card with bright pink strawberries that would be totally fine right but it doesn't mean it has to be veg vegetables and fruit either it just means it's the color palette and so there's other colors in a farmer's market. You have the... Browns. Yeah, you have the surroundings and the... the maybe signs. The asphalt, mm -hmm. the tables. The farmers. Blue jeans, overall je jeans. Um, any kind... Tablecloth. Yeah. And you get to pick. Nothing to hold okay. you back for anything, but it will just be how you see the what colors you want to use on from a farmer's market it also doesn't mean that you have to make a farmer's market a lot of times people will take the color palette and put it in the card which is fine but you don't have to so all right rhymes with b so i was thinking um well rhymes with b any i've seen lots of great ideas in the chatter box there's tree fee G, monkey, flea, free, the, um, you can do, let's see, what else? P T, one of my favorites. P's, key, she, we. I was thinking Paul Klee. <laughs> that's, that's an artist. I thought that would be fun to do a Paul Klee background. And I might. He was an artist and he did a lot of geometrics. Okay. And, um, he also did some really cool paintings, but I'm not going to try that. But, yeah, so it just has to rhyme with B. And you could use a B. Okay. A golf tee. Debris. That's a, that's an interesting one, Jill. <laughs> C, S, E, A. That's it. really oh. good. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, C is really good. Yeah, so okay. anything that rhymes with B, that's not too Shopping hard. Shopping spree. Spree, that's right. Shopping spree. I thank thee. Oh, man. Well, that'll be fun for the gallery because there'll be so many things. I like that. Is anything striking <laughs> you, Laura? Oh, well, I got bees stuck in my head because I'm thinking I have bees. I got bees coming around me. So I got that. But, like, if I had, I could do C. C's out there. Like, anything with the C, I got some stuff. But, like, it's an element. So that just means... Just means one Something little on thing card. on your card. Yes, it does okay. not have to be the focus. It doesn't have to be the biggest. It just has to. I like to think of the parameters as check boxes that you have to check off. Okay. Yeah. 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 It'll it'll start to make sense, sort of. But then again, I make bag mobiles, so I don't know. <laughs> I don't trust anything I say. And then punctuation. Punctuation could be an it could be in the background, it could be an exclamation point in a sentiment, it could be um, a comma, like thank you, comma friend. Um, okay. and yeah, it could be anywhere that you want to put in punctuation. You could put hashtags in the background, you could put hashtags in a border, you could put a row of periods and call it called it the punctuation, you could put a dot and say that's a period <laughs> and call it punctuation. It's up to whatever one. You could do a great big period in farmer's market colors with a B on it and say it was, a, yeah. So it's an art project once again. So it's however you want to do it. Okay. So it's a fun, it's a fun little thing to do. It just gives you some little hooks to hang some ideas on and uh -huh. then you get to have fun. Sounds good. So, the wheels are turning. Good. That's what we like. That's what we like. <laughs> and uh, so are you pretty comfortable with those four yep. things? Okay. Mm -hmm. I think you've got, I can see that you're not, your shoulders aren't doing this or anything. No. Your eyes aren't No, bugging. I've got ideas. I've got ideas. All right. Flowing. Perfect. I, d I knew you would. All right. Well, we have another show that is live on Tuesday nights, and this is a little advertisement 
based on in review. Thank you guys for all your great ideas. We'll be right back. Woo! Does card making ever wear you out? Are you just having one of those days? Do you ever say to yourself, I may wish there were more craft roulette on each week? Well, have we got good news for you. In Review is like part two of Craft Roulette, which features you, our card contributors. It'll be easy to find because it airs here on our Craft Roulette YouTube channel. We go live almost every Tuesday evening at 6.30 p.m. Central, and we do a number of fun things during the show, including Mail Call, where I share some of the nice cards and goodies people send us. Our card showcase, where we take a longer look at some of the contributions sent in from the most recent episode. And our Who Done It Mystery Game, where I recreate a card from the most recent episode's gallery, live on air. Everyone in the live chat gets to try and figure out which card I'm recreating. So, if you want more of what we do on Craft Roulette, you'll love our show in review. The Who Done It mystery game is just a game and we do not actually solve mysteries, but we do actually solve mysteries. The show is supposed to be on Tuesdays, but we reserve the right to reschedule as necessary. Mary will not always know what she is doing, especially with buttons and or math. Stretchy pants and snacks are not required, but advisable. Please bring a friend. Too much fun for one person included. And kitty rhyme with B, I think. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go with puppy and kitty because all last, allow it. Because <laughs> last week I was so off the off the wall. So oh, hola, Chris, we've missed you. Very good. So that's what I'm gonna do, and it's a thank you card with a kitty and a puppy. And beyond that, I don't know. So farmers market. Hmm, by golly. Um, we can have, well, some neutrals. That's pretty good. And then um, some, I, I just had these out and re-inked them today. So they should be nice and juicy. Juicy and you will see. I'll have a brown kitty and a gray doggy. It's supposed to be more black, but Black doesn't show up on doggies. Hank the tank. I could make him kind of a retriever. Just to be nice. Okay, I'll make a gray kitty and a tan doggy then, if I remember. And some brown. <laughs> and some blue. And I think that's, I'm going to call that good. So my thank you card is going to be an A2 because. Last week, I made a bag mobile. I'm trying to stay more normal. Trying to stay normal. So, um, <laughs> farmer's colors. I'm thinking like sky blue. There's going to be some blue for sky. And there's going to be green for lettuce and all those kind of things. There's going to be stands that are brown. And probably some spots on the potatoes <laughs> that are charcoal color. You can stretch this, these parameters really far before they break. It's absolutely true. I'll find a thank you. Deputy Heidi, if you are here tonight, you may have to remind me. But, yeah. Yeah, that's the ticket. All right. I know Laura's getting things ready whenever you're ready, Laura. You just let us know and we'll bring you back. Okay. Well, what'd you come up with? Okay. 
Okay, so I when you said farmers market, I immediately thought of gingham. Good. Yes, and, um, I see that. Yeah, so I have this square dance stencil, and it's kind of a it kind of creates like a gingham. So I might do like a little gingham background with some cute. Um, you know, maybe farm colors. I'm not sure. Maybe maybe. Well, okay. when I think of a gingham tablecloth, I kind of think of red. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so I'm going to do that. And then um, I have this stamp set that has a little B. So I'm going to put a little B on there somewhere. And then I got to um, make it a thank you card. So I'm going to do that. So that's where I'm at so far. I'm going to start I with the background. It's... Oh, you've already stamped a cat? Yeah, yeah. But that's okay. That's okay. <laughs> There's We're not racing. There's no... Okay. Nobody gets a prize for being first. Unless you want a prize like our Club 52, which is nothing. <laughs> so we can, we can give you a prize, but it won't mean much. Okay. Maybe, yeah. I just thought these would be kind of easy and fun to play with. So that's as hard as I'm going. I really, I really, um, I really stretched myself last week. I'm done being stretchy. I'm feeling <laughs> kind, of kind of stiff. Those are cute little images. What stamp set is that? Oh, it's an ancient one from close to my heart. Oh, ancient. it is? Most, almost all of my stamp sets are ancient. Almost all of my products are ancient. <laughs> Because if there is one that's cute, I tend to keep it, especially of critters. Yes. Because I love the critters. Now, do you ever, like, clean out your, like, do you ever purge? I used to. When I was a consultant, because I would have to make room for new product and um, get some cash <laughs> to, uh, <laughs> to reinvest. <laughs> but now that I don't do that... I don't as often. Uh -uh. There we go. I'm going to put put some clear embossing on these guys because I don't want to mess. I'm going to do some water coloring, I think, with the, with the ink colors. And I don't want any kind of uh, problem. Okay, so I'm starting with the watermelon ink because I thought, hey. Yeah. Very appropriate. Yes. Yeah, the technique that you did on your, um, on those strawberries and whatnot was, I don't know that I've ever seen it off, off register quite, but yeah. It's a great way to color fast, and she, you made a, a stencil, basically out of die cuts. And yes, I did. I took the dies, and then with the opening, I just ink blended the colors. So easy to color them in. So I, it's such a great idea. Do you like to color? I am not good at um, Copics. They, they're hard. Yeah, I'm not good. Yeah, but. I, I still try, but I usually just use them for really basic stuff. I don't do the fancy stuff. Yeah. Yeah, and they're a lot better than the old days stuff. Do you have special cardstock that you use for your when you cope at color? Well, that would probably help. And no, I don't. I yeah. use some kind of something. But um, I've heard that. I just don't even try that hard. Yeah. So. <laughs> Truth be told, it's just like I just want some color on there. So I do like to do it, but I'm just I'm not super patient. Right. Right. I don't I can know why. Color blend. I like I'm always like rushing. I don't know. I need to just, and that's what keeps me from using Copics. Yeah. Yeah. Well, maybe it's because you got to. Five kids. You know what's funny? I have four kids, and five just sounds like a ton. It just, it sounds, it's exponentially more. Uh, I'm pretty sure. But you said you had four kids in six years. Yeah. 
I was trying to do the math on that. It was fast and furious. Yeah. It's almost seven years, but, um, yep. And you didn't have twins? No, uh uh. uh. Nope. And I had a real good friend, and we used to get together once a week, and um, she had five, and I just couldn't believe that fifth one. It would have thrown me over. But <laughs> she said she had a little thing that she said, you know, there's a difference between your first baby and your fifth baby, or your third baby. That's as far as she went on this analogy. And she said, the first baby throws the Cheerio down off the off the high cherry you pick up the cheerio you throw it away second baby does the same thing you pick up the cheerio you blow on it and put it back on the kid's tray the third kid you just pour the cereal on the floor <laughs> <laughs> and then um I, when i had the fourth kid i found out what the fourth kid did she went to the cereal drawer by herself and got the cheerios out and poured them on the floor it was <laughs> it was all quite a thing so That's what is the fifth, Yeah, so what does the fifth kid do? I don't even know. Just go under the table at dinner and just try to yeah, get you something. Yeah, start you start on the floor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or they stand on the table. I don't know. We the fourth one also danced on the table. <laughs> but it was fine and it was it was so hectic. And yeah. I was thinking you're still in a lot of hectic stuff because you have a 12 year old and you yeah. kind of get used to and addicted to that chaos. Yeah. Yeah. I was talking to my mom the other day because she, when I was growing up, my mom worked a full time job. And uh -huh. um, I, when I think about it now, I always ask, I don't know how you did that, mom. You came home from working eight hours and you start supper and then you clean up supper and you throw a load in. Like, how did you do that? And she's like, Laura. I was younger and you do what you have to do and you, you do it because you can do it because you have to do it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of truth in that. Yeah. Cause well, my husband, he was living in Germany this past year. He lived in Germany and he coached oh. a hockey team. So we were apart for like nine months. And at first I'm like, I'm not going to be able to do this without his help. And, uh, but I, I, I figured out I could do it. I did it. And he, he was over there like, I don't think I we're going to be able to eat. Like, he never cooked. And he started cooking. And what, I'm telling you, it made us appreciate each other. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I got uh, a little game of background. I had a friend whose husband served in Afghanistan during that thing, and um, <laughs> she said when he was coming home, she said, okay, I've got everything how it should be running like it should be. I hope yeah. he doesn't come home and mess it up. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it is true. You kind of get used to things going a certain way. Yep. Well... I, w I got, you know, when he left, I knew I was going to have to walk that dog every day. I mean, he's going to be walked and he's right. got to be active. He's a very active dog. And so that was on me when he was gone. And I'm like, OK, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. And you know what? It became part of my routine. Every morning I took Emma to school, come home, walk the dog. And, mm -hmm. you know, after a while you start to enjoy it and it becomes, you know. And so then when he came home and he starts walking the dog, I'm like, well, what the heck? Now you're <laughs> taking it away. <laughs> and we're like fighting over who's going to walk the dog. <laughs> but now with all the kids home, oh my gosh, this dog is getting run ragged because he'll walk <laughs> the dog and then the other kids will get up and they'll go for a run and they'll take him with him for a run. And then our neighbor dog starts playing. And I mean, by the end of the night, he can't even walk. He's so exhausted. <laughs> Poor puppy. Living his best life. He is living his best life, though. I do have some wonderful questions from our patrons that they would like to know more about you. And we're going to start with this little guy. Sharon Caster from the Red Chair, now Brown Chair, says, Your mother always has orange sherbet in her freezer. <laughs> and That's true. she wonders about frozen treats. But what I want to know about, 
does that make you team orange or team purple? I did explain that to you before the show that we have two political factions, team orange and team purple. And you were kind of like, whoa, I don't know. So yes, have I you thought? I mean, generally, I don't discriminate. You know what I'm saying? Like, I like all <laughs> colors all together. I like all the colors all together. But if I had to choose a team, um, I'm probably... I. I'd probably go orange. I can yeah. see that in your co your cards and the palettes you use. You use a lot yeah. of orange, yellow, pink. But I do love purple. I mean, I'm not like you know what I'm saying. Like I love purple. Yeah, yeah. You're not you're not a purple hater. Right. Exactly. Just that if you had a choice, that was all. Right. We, that's all we ask. If you had right. a choice. So now we know. And then we also got the Gloria Davis question answered, which is your favorite color combination maybe is you don't have one? Or do you love them all? Or do you tend to go um, with the orange, pinks, and yellow kind of thing? Gosh, favorite color combination. I mean, rainbow, obviously. But um, I do tend to gravitate towards warm tones. So like pink orange yellow like in the warm but I, I like cool too you know what i mean i do it's hard it's hard to it's kind of a mood thing yes and a seasonal thing don't you think there's right. a bit of i mean red and green is great but it's really great in december well i feel like i have seasonal rainbows <laughs> Explain. Like I have a, a very soft, pastel -y, fresh summer rainbow. And then when it's fall, you can do like the fall rainbow, very like autumn autumnal, but it's still got That's... that spectrum, but it's like plum and cranberry. And then like, especially at Christmas, that's what I do a Christmas rainbow where you start with red and you stop at green. You still get the feel of spectrum, but it feels like holiday-ish. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yep, colors are really important. They're they're not just a pretty little thing. They make sense. <laughs> they got meaning. Well, Hank, Kathy Morris asked about Hank the Tank. Well, we found out already. Hank the Tank is tired. <laughs> Poor Hank. He's getting too much love. Is he getting a lot of cookies? Oh, well, he gets a lot of dog treats, you know, and because we keep a jar of dog treats on the counter. And I told my daughter, Emma, I'm like, Emma, you know, there's seven of us in our family. And I swear to you, we're all giving him a treat a day. That's seven treats this dog's getting. <laughs> Plus, he's begging for, you know, food when we're having our meals. I mean, I don't know. Like, he's, but he's running it off, I guess. I... Yes, he's probably really team, hungry. <laughs> Probably extra hungry. Poor little guy. <laughs> and Rebecca Feltner would like to know that this whole mother of five thing is pretty phenomenal. There aren't that many of you. Oh, wow. You know, I don't think there are that many mothers of five. I don't know. I wonder what the percentage of mothers is that it is. But um, she wonders, and it is kind of a, wow, how do you fit it all in? Like you did with Ask Your Mother. How do you fit in all and organize all your crafting time? Do you have to do it late at night or in the morning? Um, well, you know, it's nice when school is in session because I'll work during those hours, you know, when everybody's working or at school. But now in the mm -hmm. summer, it is it can be challenging because everyone's home and they're noisy and they're talking to me. And I'm like, could you give me just a minute to concentrate? And mm. that's hard. But yeah, so generally I like to work in the day because by the time night comes, I'm just kind of getting exhausted. But a lot of times I'll like when I do videos, I'll shoot it in the day, and photograph it in the day. But I'll probably have to do the editing and the voiceover. I can do that sitting on the couch and relax. Oh, so it's wow. like a two part of my job. It's like the, the physical work and then there's the back end like computer work. Right. Yes. Do you like that part? Was well you had the graphic background. Did that help with that? 
Yeah, probably did. Yeah, I don't mind it. I don't mind it because I can sit down. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. Fair enough. How's your little project coming? Good. I'm going to make a little, um, I think this is a cone flower. I think so. A like an flower. echinacea. Is that what that's called? Are you, are the, you like, do you know your flowers and stuff? Some of them. Do you? Some of them. I, well, they're also, yeah, that's what I think of those. Like the echinacea, the pink ones with the drop leaves. Do you, uh, like, do you have a garden or do you plant I stuff? do. You do? I do, and I have little baby tomato this big. I'm so excited. Wow. So do you have basil? I do. Yeah. So you're going to make some spaghetti or some bruschetta? No doubt. We'll have some good stuff. That's that's oh. what I'm thinking. We're going to have some good stuff coming out of that. As my, uh, long as the squirrels don't daughter, get it first. My oldest daughter just got home. She uh, finished her last semester of college in Florence, Italy. Oh, my gosh. And one of her classes was um, like learning how to cook Italian. And so she came home the other night and she uh, made a supper from scratch. I mean, like she made the pasta. Yummy. This is the yeah. best. Homemade pasta. Mr. Producer is a cook. And, really? Um, oh, he makes some pasta that is good. Really? Yeah. It's good, isn't it? It's so different than the dry stuff. Yes. So different. But I'll tell you, making homemade pasta for seven people is uh, an <laughs> Olympic sport. <laughs> that's a lot of people. I use a KitchenAid for that. Ah, that's a good idea. Yeah, he's got a pasta extruder thing. Nice. Oh. She, like, hand-rolled the noodles. This is what she learned in class. It's called, they call it over there, peachy. That's what the noodles called peachy and it's mm -hmm. rolled like rolled like thick rolled spaghetti noodles that sounds so good what kind of sauce did she use she just made a really simple marinara just tomato mm -hmm. yep yum very good are you is she done with school or are you gonna let her go yeah back? so she's done now that was her uh last semester of her senior okay. And she studied graphic de design as well. That's so nice. Yeah. This, did you compare notes from when you were in school compared to her in school? Oh, well, she, you know, these kids these days, they're so tech savvy, you know, like she knows right. how to use the computer so well. And I do not. And so I envy her knowledge. Mm hmm. Yep. Different world. Yeah. Are you like yeah. just about finished? Well, I can piddle for hours. Don't worry about it. <laughs> oh, yes. Punctuation. Thank you, Ellen Jarvis. See, I forgot punctuation. Oh, that's a good reminder. I will have to figure out. I think I will do my period trick <laughs> now that you mention it. Nothing wrong with that. You, when you were in grade or um, junior high, did you used to use a heart for a period? <laughs> use a what for a period? <laughs> for a heart. Do you remember oh, when, well, we did when that you'd write notes to eyes. each other. Yeah. The tittle. The tittle. Yes, the tittle. But also end periods. Ending your sentence with a heart. Yeah. Yeah. That was really love right there. <laughs> <laughs> Real love. It's like we were, we were, that was old fashioned um, emoticons. Now, uh, you said you were a teacher? No, I was a, I was a phonics tutor. A phonics teacher? Mm hmm. Oh, wow. Tutor. Mm hmm. Oh, a phonics tutor. Yeah. There's my periods right there. Go 
was fun. It really so was. what is that? Like you helped people like to pronounce things? Um, kids that had trouble reading. Oh, reading. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. I had to do that. I had to do that because I didn't, um, like all my sentences ran together. I didn't like stop. And so, yeah, we I were just in a hurry. We yes. were just in a hurry. That's all. <laughs> you had things to do. Pasta to eat. Cards <laughs> to make. For the love of Pete, what are you talking about? <sighs> so what ages did you do that? Like third grade? Uh, generally by third grade, they were done with me, but, um, uh, I had kindergarten through third, but, uh, okay. but generally they were pretty far. They were done by then. They were mad at me by, then, by third grade. <laughs> <laughs> second graders were really, I had a lot of kids from second grade, but I would have the same kids. They would follow me so through from year to year. So, yeah. And I got a message from one just the other day. He's 13, and I don't hear from him very often, but I'm a Facebook friend, and he he messaged me. And I was like, wow, that's so cool. That's really cute. Yeah. Yeah, that was, that was sweet. Sweet kid. He wouldn't want me to tell anybody that, though. <laughs> <laughs> Gwen Simmons has a on I have a couple questions about card making and how it has changed and you have, what you've been making cards forever and so you probably have a pretty good feel for the answers that you're going to give but um, Gwen Simmons asks how has your crafting style changed pre and post Germany what did you find out living in Germany for products and things Oh you know, we've talked well, a little it's bit so to much Justine easier to get that. products here Yeah yeah, it is. But uh, my, um, I feel like being over there and having this small apartment, it made me become more efficient and realizing that you really don't need as much. You don't need as much. So I learned how to, because I could only take a little bit of stuff with me. And at first I was, I'm like, how am I going to survive without every single thing in my craft room? But you realize you don't need that much. Yeah. It's so, nice to have some of those things, but they can also be just confusing and and a burden at some point, sometimes. Yes. But there's, it's nice to have a lot of the basics. When you first started, um, was it, what all was there? There was probably like heat embossing and stamps and well, obviously stamps because you went to Stampin' Up. Well, I remember um, when I first started, there was a lot of um, ribbon and a lot of buttons. <laughs> a yeah. lot of that stuff and a lot of texture. And um, I would say it was a lot. There, Like clean and simple was just coming in, that whole concept. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. So you came in just at the right time. Do you think that was um, formative for your style? Or when you Well, were... when I first started, you know, I didn't know. I just started following people who I loved and I looked up to them and I would kind of copy what they do and try to think like them. And, mm -hmm. and then, you know, somewhere along the line, you start finding your own self. But yeah, clean and simple is definitely probably where I feel the most comfortable. Well, Leslie Miller says she found card making has elevated to an art form in the 40 years that she's been crafting. 40 years? My goodness, <laughs> you started, started in the cradle, Leslie. Due to all the products that have been developed. And so your thoughts were kind of like what you were just saying, clean and simple. That maybe you don't need as... What kind of things did you, were your go-to items then? Um, let's see. Inks well, I, have and stamps, I still have or? jars and jars of buttons. And I don't know. I don't really don't use them anymore. But I can't part with them. But I probably should part with them. 
Um, but I have, I still have so much cardstock. I do love cardstock. That's probably my favorite thing is cardstock. Oh, okay. Do you use a lot of pattern paper ever? I don't use very much, but I do love pattern paper and uh -huh. I like it, but I, I find I don't use it. Sometimes I'll use it, but rarely, but I do like to buy it. <laughs> they're so cute aren't they it's the cutest stuff <laughs> i know it really is <laughs> do you like making pattern paper then when you yeah i yeah that's what i think i i prefer to like for example my background here it was more fun to me to like stencil my own gingham rather than use gingham pattern paper mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah Yeah, I get that. And plus you can control your colors, et cetera, et cetera. So are you coloring your uh, critters there, the colors of your pets? No, well, no. Uh, I do, our cat's black, but if you do a black cat, there's no detail. <laughs> right. And our dog's black, and so if you do a black dog, there's no detail. <laughs> so you might as well just put a piece of black cardstock down and say that's with some little pointed ears and that's Kurt one and a <laughs> black a bigger black piece of cardstock with little tiny ears and that would be boomer but this this is for Hank of course Hank probably doesn't have black ears but uh -huh. I thought oh I'll make him Hank color kind of kind of toffee looking <laughs> not be a good idea let's not do that so, yep, the Australian Shepherd is a little bit. He's red. He's cute. Okay. Such a pretty boy. Such a pretty boy. So, Cheryl Jackson did have a question about going away on the weekends. And what will you, do you, do you ever do that now that you're back? Go away on the weekends? What do you mean? To craft. Oh, no. No, no. I don't leave the house a lot. I only leave the house to get groceries <laughs> and, or go to a hockey game. I hear you. My daughter was saying today, Mom, you need to get out of the basement. You need to get out of the basement. It's good for you. <laughs> My family said, tells I, me I the do. same thing. Mom, you need to get out. It's not a bad place to be. I mean, I've I've crafted it to be quite comfortable. I like it. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so it's kind of hard. We talk about on Craft Roulette because people like to leave on the weekends sometimes and they still want to play Craft Roulette. And so I they're see. like what do I take? What do, what do we do? And so we talk a lot about um, using what you have, finding right. resources. And it doesn't mean necessarily going to a scrapbook store, but using the resources that you can find, like maps and um, ticket stubs and just being creative and actually even trying drawing. And uh, we've seen some people really step out. It's really fun. But they get those cards in. <laughs> <laughs> they don't want to miss a week. It's wonderful. So I have with gone your graphic. to a couple craft retreats before, and it is stressful to think about. That's a whole nother art in itself is being able to like pack up essential craft supplies and cute little organizational totes and have the packing way. Like that's an art in itself. I was never very good at it, but yep. It, I would, I used to host those kind of crops and people were remarkable. They would fill their back of their big SUVs with their stuff. And I, whew, it was, it was good because they would share with other people that didn't have something. It was nice. We had a lot of fun, but, um, <laughs> it isn't easy to pack for crops and even craft roulette. But we do kind of have oh. a list of things that we suggest. Yeah. I, I, I don't like to go places without a sketch pad and a pencil. <laughs> I feel better whether when I can draw something to express myself. So so when you were in graphics, so when you, you didn't do, did you do like manual graphics in school? It wasn't. Yes, we did everything by hand. We did it. Mm -hmm. Computers were just starting to come in when I was uh, finishing. So, yeah, we did everything by hand the old school way. Isn't that something? I know. Makes us, makes us dated. 
That's okay. <laughs> can look at my hands or my face and know I'm dated. <laughs> no I'm still, there. how are you incorporating punctuation? I put rows of periods. Oh, Ellipses. very good idea. <laughs> it was kind of a sneak, but it's okay. I'm glad I got reminded so the deputy Heidi didn't come get me. <laughs> And you're not, don't rush. Your card is coming together beautifully. Just take your time. I just happen to, this one didn't take very long. Okay. I can't think of anything. I'm going to keep it kind of simple because I was so crazy last week. So I'm just, I'm letting it be. Just holding on to itself. It's just going to have to be its own person. And then I did put it, for your kindness, on the inside. And I was going to put something else in there, but I don't remember. Oh, I do need to do something. I forgot. I need to put inspired by craft roulette. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you there have a stamp. Go. I do. Inspired by craft roulette. Then I, let's see, what would go well with this? A thank you card, farmer's market, we're in the punctuation. I think we'll just use the paper clip. We'd love to send you one of our stamp sets, Laura, if you'd like it. I would love it. We will do it. So now, does a tittle count? Is That's not punctuation, is it? No, I don't Ooh, think that's, that's so. That's a good question. A, a punctuation, I don't think so. It's part of a alphabet. Part of a glyph. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I know what I was going to put in there. I was going to put these little hearts. I felt like an adult crafter today. I re-inked my stamps. <laughs> my stamp pants. Oh! Felt very grown up. Yeah. Wikipedia classifies a tittle as part of a glyph. Oh. Okay. I'm trying to look and see what you could do. You could make a little, you could make the B have a little dash flight line. That's what I was thinking of making little dots for the, for the B. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, and call them little periods like you. Yeah. We know how to work the parameters. No <laughs> wheel's going to get the best of us. <laughs> well, you've kind of, you kind of know a lot of the big YouTube crafters. This is kind of like, a, this is a question from one of my buddies, Crafty Al, and she would like to know if crafting in person with a favorite person, have you, who is still on your list that you would like to craft in person with? Oh, I would love to uh, craft in person with Kathy Zilski for sure. There you go. That was easy. We should make that happen for you. You're yeah. not that far. No, we're not. And she got a but split. She's, she's one of those two that never leaves her house. <laughs> and like it's her like and I, we can talk sometimes. Sometimes we'll talk and do a FaceTime chat or whatever. But her and I both like, that's enough. FaceTime and then we'll see you later. <laughs> you do need to have that escape hatch when you're when you're this person. Right? Yeah. That you need to get back into your, in your own little comfy space. I think, I know. Yeah. It's hard to commit to the, a lot of exposure. Somebody I have gone my, to uh, crafty retreats and you're in a whole big room of people crafting and for me I have trouble concentrating on what I'm uh -huh. doing. Yeah. Can't get a clear thought. Right. Right. I would just take busy work. But I could never get anything really done. Yeah. It was and it was okay though just having that social time and chatting and Hanging out was good, too, yes. and getting other ideas. So I think I've probably done all that I need to do on that. <laughs> Just, I think I've had my fill. <laughs> done it over the years, and I can just stay in my so, basement now. What did you say you've done? How many, how many uh, episodes? This is 167. So you've done 167 cards? Uh-huh. 
I have. Wow. I have. And I, for a while, early on, I sent some out to people. Like, sent them, I don't know. And so I've lost about four of them. But other than that, I've okay. kept the other ones. <laughs> I don't have know you why ever done on uh, one of these where you're like, felt like your card was just a complete disaster? Uh-huh. Yes. There's a name for it. Yes. We even did a series for our patrons a couple months ago. Card crimes. <laughs> <laughs> The few were on the verge of felony, but most of them were just misdemeanors, and they were easily <laughs> rehabilitated. <laughs> but yep, yep, car yeah, it happens, doesn't it? Some well, it last does. week was darn close; it was on the precipice, but it, <laughs> it still stayed okay because it was it needed just to be out there. But um, yeah, it, it happens. Sometimes it's, yeah, and it's not usually like mechanics, it's just something dumb, a weird color combination that didn't work for the choices that I made, or I don't know. The mechanics yes. were usually okay, but man, card crimes. <laughs> I've, I've got plenty more to do, too. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Susan says she might be stuck in solitary confinement. <laughs> Let me have it as long as it's here. <laughs> That's fun. That's fun. So how'd you get started on design teams? Because Irene Smith is asking about that. What kind of things? Um, how'd you get started with that? Um, let's see. How did I get started? Um, hold on one second. I'm trying to find a thank you. Fine. They probably wanted her. He's trying to find something that said thank you. P Y. Um, I have all these little pre-printed. Things. This is what oh, I always yeah. turn to when I don't, when I can't find what I want, and I and I look through here until I can find something. Uh, okay, so Perfect. yeah, I started crafting and probably did it a little while, a couple of years, and then I, I got an email from a company who was like, "Can we send you some product?" And at first, you know, you just you get the free product, and you're just basically you're working for product, right? And that's just kind of. You got to like pay your dues. That's how you start out. Mm -hmm. And then after a couple of years, you actually make some money. Like they'll sell, they send you the product and they'll pay you for your work. But that doesn't happen overnight. You know, it takes time. Right. Right. Yeah. And so then when you, when you do good for one company, another company will ask you, usually they'll, usually what first happens is like, can we send you some product? We'd love to have you guest design. So it's kind of a trial. See if you like it, see if they like you. Sure. And, um, yeah, but, um, I, I really, I really love, I, I love working with all the different companies. I love all the different people and I like the different styles. Mm -hmm. Um, here's one. Thank you. But, uh, there's so many companies now yeah. and, uh, it can get overwhelming because you just, you can't, you can't, uh, do it all. You can't work with everyone. Sometimes no. I have to say no, and that's hard. Because I have a little bit, like a little bit of a people pleaser syndrome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's because you're a, that golden retriever in you. <laughs> it's Hank's influence. Yeah. Mm hmm. He wants to please. Yeah. So I He'll often find cookies. myself over committing. Oh, yeah. Things. Is that being kind of into that chaos too? Yeah. Is that five kids, my life is got to be running on supersonic speed or I think I'm not doing enough. <laughs> True. Yeah. Cute. Okay, so now I'm just going to do some little dots. See how fast this came together? Look at that. Yes. You did great. Thank you. This was fun. I never have done anything like this before. 
Oh, well, welcome to Craft Roulette, where we just throw you in the deep end. We don't throw you under a bus, but we do throw you in the deep end. <laughs> so... We are going to tell everybody how they can play along. People are already sending in cards, so this is a fun thing. Sus I see Susan in the chatterbox saying she... Oh, send in your card, girl. Make the very best card you can. Use those four parameters and join us. It's fun. We have people of all sorts of experience, styles. Um, sometimes they are a little rushed and their cards are simple. Sometimes they're not as rushed and their cards are remarkably complex but we have room at our table for all sorts so that's half the fun of it is having right. all these different styles in one place and seeing what your beautifully well-kissed mind comes up with I didn't put any bling I had my periods my <laughs> that was my bling I bet we'll see some sequins some boops that uh, are going to act as punctuation it'll be fun to see how people put in their punctuation yes i'm curious to see that too yeah it's always fun okay you were fast you're you're wanting that pizza i can tell look at that <laughs> all right i'm gonna go through mine mine is a thank you card i got my little thankful and then on the inside it says for your kindness farmer's market Farmer's Market colors, I've just got some basic neutrals and then like green for vegetables and blue sky. I don't think there's any blue fruit or any, well, maybe some grapes, but I started, there's blue potatoes also. So that's what I did for my Farmer's Market colors. Rhymes with B, I have kitty and doggy <laughs> or puppy. And for punctuation, I put all these little periods or ellipses all over the ground <laughs> for my little punctuating embellishments yeah let's run through your card let's see oh that's so cute fluff them up fluff them up can you hear us Laura? i don't think she can i'm gonna go through her card for her then while you look that out a thank you card it says friend thank you Farmer's Market color. She went with the inspiration of like a gingham background. So she did a stencil. It's gorgeous. Rhymes with B. She used B, which is very much rhymes with B. <laughs> and for punctuation, she put some little sequins or such for her little punctuation. And we're having a little trouble with her sound. So I think... We'll let Mr. Producer work with that while we tell everybody how they can play. I don't think she can hear us either, but they'll figure it out. That's why we have Mr. Producer, isn't it? Yes, yes it is. You should play. Really, we'd love to have you. Just use those four parameters. Make a project using those four parameters and send it to craftroulette.live. There's a form there. You just take your very big picture of your very best card and upload it there. Tell us all about anything that's a little hard to figure out. And we will enjoy it on the gallery Monday morning. So on next Friday night, we will enjoy it on the slideshow. Plus, we may we may talk about you on in review on Tuesday. Next week, we get to meet May May Helms. That's going to be a big treat. I Do you think I'll get a draw by the time the evening's done? I don't know. Amanda Stevens will be joining us after that. I do have a post on our Facebook group, which is Craft Roulette Show Facebook group. Please join us as well over there. Make sure you answer those questions before you get admitted. And she did a podcast, and I have it scheduled to go out on Sunday, so you can hear that. Vicki Ruta from England is training for the show. <laughs> She's going to join us at the end. She's got a countdown going on. It's, her enthusiasm is absolutely contagious. Jeannie Lou will be back. to. We'll catch up with her. It's been a while since we got to see her. And then Leslie Benson, a Stampin' Up! girl. We're going to see her after that. It's fun every darn week. We just never know what we're going to have, and we're always glad for new parameters to play with. Let's see what we got. Oh, we do want to thank our patrons. And we do have that call tomorrow. You can still join us. Just become a patron. We've got levels for all sorts of 
amounts. It sounds kind of crass to ask for money, but dadgummit, we, we do. <laughs> so that's just how it goes. We've got expenses to keep things going around here, and uh, that's how we pay for it. So thank you, thank you so much, our dear, dear patrons. Look at all of you wonderful people. I hope to meet a whole bunch of you tomorrow. Or <laughs> I hope the game works. I don't know. I have no idea. It could be a complete train wreck. But we'll still have a good time. That's the nature of Craft Roulette and their patrons. So, yep, we thank you, each and every one of you. You're very, very meaningful to us. And I love seeing those lists of beautiful names go by. Hope your brains are all well kissed. Yeah, we have a lot of bonus content over there. Yes, yes, we do. Oh, it's giveaway time. And good news, we got Laura back. <laughs> so it's wonderful. And even better news, I didn't have to do a thing except sit here like it. Everything was fine. <laughs> That's what four kids will do to you. You learn how to act like everything's fine, everything's fine while the house is on fire. So anyway, there's the giveaway rules. You, if you send in a card last week, your name will be on this. Um, what, what do we want to give away first, sir? Handmade card with an itty-bitty gift. Hand, the OG, the original giveaway, handmade card with an itty-bitty gift. This will go anywhere. Thank you guys for sending in some of those itty-bitty gifts. I do send them out in goodie bags and um, in these cards. So thank you so much. These are all things that people have donated to us. It's a good time to clean in your craft room in the summer. And, oh, Roberta. She always is fun. Berta Berta. Mrs. Birthday Bob. Make sure you send me your email. Or email me. No, 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 no. Send me your address through claim prize form after the show. I'll get it right someday. It's on our website. Yeah. You know, I don't have to be here. I'm, I could just go take a nap. I did lie down. So this is for a goodie bag. Okay, goodie bag it is. Haven't sent one of those out in a while. Oh, Gwen, she loves stuff. Uh, I'll send, she and I play Waffle. <laughs> and it's her birthday month. Extra bonus. We do have a birthday um, card exchange over on our patron group. I think I sent out 13 birthday cards this month. It was amazing. <laughs> yeah. And this is for a Brutus Monroe gift certificate. And remember, he has a special for you all month. Kathy Morris. Kathy Morris, congratulations. So much fun. And he does have a special discount if you can look over on craftroulette.live under Craft a 15. Oh, all that's all this. Okay, Craft 15. And it's for 15%. Isn't that something? Oh, I got you started on Waffle. Isn't it fun? May May made it. Another gift certificate going to Connie Long. You guys have to contact me after the show using the claim prize form. You have till Sunday night. If you are a patron, you have till Thursday. We give you extra time because we know you're busy. And for Pear Blossom Press. All right. Good old, that Amanda, she's something else. She she introduced me to Laura and many others. Anna Rebidu, she's been a contributor for a long time. That's very exciting and very nice. Make sure you guys let me know. Congratulations to each and every one of you. We will be glad to give get you those inf that information to you. Yahoo, who doesn't like stuff? We'll work for stuff. There we are. Miss Laura, you did it. I did it. You did, did you it lose really me fast. for a while? Did I get yeah. lost? I got yeah. lost. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, you found very... me. Yeah. <laughs> we went searching for you. We had torches, <laughs> flashlights, snooping dogs. We had it all going out there <laughs> looking for you. Where's Laura? Where's Laura? We found you. But thank you so much. It was a real pleasure to have you on. Getting to thank know you. Thank you so much for having me. It was really a lot of fun. And I love, love, love your uh, stamp set. Oh, thank you. It's yeah. uh, unique to Craft Roulette because we have developed over the time with um, all these parameters. There have been some that nobody liked. 
<laughs> like paper clip. And so we put paper clip on the stamp set, for instance. Oh, and, good idea. Um, yeah, just kind of, and gnomes. There's a whole bunch of people that would never buy a gnome stamp because they don't like them. So we put right. a gnome on here. So if we ever got a gnome, they are now equipped. Ah, so you get the stamp set and you're ready for anything that might come your way. That's about right. That's about <laughs> right. That's the, that's the idea. We always have a thoughtful question from our rock star Grandma Gay. And her question for you is, what colors come to mind with the phrase, at water's edge? Uh, edge of a lake, stream, ocean, beach, horizon, near or far? What do you think? Uh, aqua. <laughs> aqua? Yeah. You, do you go to aqua sunset and, colors? Uh, or White and craft. Like the beach is the sand, the white is the waves, and the aqua, yeah. Yeah, maybe Destin, Florida. White yes. sands and, yeah, aqua. Take me oh. there. Yeah, <laughs> right, <laughs> right, I know. It sounds good about now. Yeah. But, yeah. Well, thank you again. Um, for somebody that has never been on the show or it, we're, you're really new to the show's concept, I think you did a beautiful job. Oh, well, thank you so much. Yeah, I hope it wasn't painful. And I so bet your family. So am I supposed to submit my card? Yeah, I'll, I'll talk to you after the show about oh. it, and that'll we'll get all that details done. But for now, let's kiss our brains. Okay. Sign off, and you can go have some pizza if they haven't eaten it all. <laughs> I will. I will. All right. Mwah, mwah. <laughs> thank you, Mr. Producer Chatterbox. I'll be reading your comments tomorrow. Laura, like I said, it was a delight. Thank you very, very much. Y'all stay safe. Have a good night. And we'll talk to you Tuesday or next Friday. Bye-bye.